there, everybody. I'm Chef Greg, Director of Culinary Innovation at RecTech in beautiful Evans, Georgia. If you're not sure how to trim a brisket, we're going to show you right here, right now, on this delicious Chattel Farms. It's one of their Angus briskets. Let's get started. It's a beautiful 16-pound piece of meat. Um, again, Chattel Farms raises some amazing cattle. They've got both Angus and Wagyu varieties for all of your needs. We're going to cook this delicious uh, Angus brisket here. And if this is your first time trimming a brisket, don't worry, we're going to show you how it's done here today. Again, the back side of the brisket, this is going to be the flat or the leaner uh, portion of the brisket. And then if we flip it over, you'll kind of see some of this delicious marbling right in here. This is going to be that point meat where those burn ends come from. Absolutely delicious. So we're going to trim this up, make it a little bit more aerodynamic because again, brisket is the pectoral muscle of the cow. It's a pretty dense muscle. It does require a good bit of cooking to make it tender, but don't worry, I got some shortcuts for you guys. One thing to keep in mind, you can see on some of the ends, it'll be a little bit thinner. So obviously this is not gonna cook as consistent as this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna trim it up a little bit, make it a little bit more aerodynamic because we're gonna go hot and fast today. We'll be cooking on the RT1250. Again, you can check that out at rectech.com. We're gonna burn those ultimate blend pellets. So if there's some stuff hanging off the brisket, we're just gonna trim it up. And again, the butchers at Chattel Farms did a great job prepping this for us. This is, again, beautiful, beautiful piece of meat here. But we're gonna save all this fat, so I'm gonna make some delicious sausage later on. But all this hard fat, look how beautiful and milky white that is. I'm telling you, this was a happy cow. They really focus on sustainable um, cattle growth as well as animal welfare and you can taste the quality in their beef. A couple secrets here, make sure your knife is good and sharp. Make sure your brisket is really, really cold. So you can definitely put that in the freezer for you know about 20 or 30 minutes before you cook it. Again, you can always take more off, you can't put it back. And you can kind of feel that brisket now. We're getting down to where that meat is. So I'm gonna come back over here, and we're gonna trim this off. We're gonna leave about a quarter inch of fat on the top of the brisket. You can really kind of squeeze in there with your thumb. The, the fat itself is really hard, but when you get it thin enough, you can really kind of feel that, that consistency. And you already see we've taken off a good bit of that hump there. The beauty of cooking hot and fast, we'll have this brisket done in about five and a half hours. And if you've never uh, cooked a brisket hot and fast, you are missing out. That Rectech RT1250 is gonna keep the perfect cooking environment for this piece of meat. And you can see we got down to the meat there. Look at that marbling on that uh, leaner section of that flat. Absolutely delicious. There we go. Kinda keep just evening it out. If you expose some of the protein, not a big deal. Again, we started with about a 16 pound piece of meat. We're gonna take probably about three pounds of fat off of it. And all this spongy fat, you kinda of wanna get off. It's not gonna render and be, uh, be tasty. Again, this cattle was raised in Reedsville, Georgia. Make sure you check them out at shopchattelfarms.com. So we're basically done on the top here. Okay, we got it nice and consistent and even across the bottom of that point. We're gonna flip this over and we're gonna address the flat here. And you can kind of see there's some gobs of fat and stuff hanging off the, the back. Not a big deal, we'll just trim that off. We can save these scraps since there's a good bit of protein there. We can grind those up, make some delicious hamburgers. Just expose a little bit of that meat on the back side here. We're not gonna get crazy. We don't need to cut all of it off, but if there's big pockets. And again, nice sharp knife makes a world of difference. That's looking good to me. Now when we slice this, what we can do is we're gonna do something now to make it a little bit easier for us. So if we get in here nice and close, you can see the grain of this meat, okay, is running in this fashion. So when the brisket comes off, we wanna slice it against the grain. So what I do is I go ahead at the very back here, make a straight cut. And that way I know when I'm gonna slice my, point, uh, my, uh, my flat, I'm gonna slice backwards from there. But you can see this brisket is nice and aerodynamic. It's very even and consistent. Let's go ahead and get this thing seasoned up. We'll be cooking this fat side down today, so we're gonna go ahead and season this side first. I like to add a little bit of sesame oil as my binder, and that's gonna make the seasoning stick here really nice. 
Okay. We're going to use a couple different rubs. You guys can check these out at rectech.com. We're going to use some of that Chef Greg's all-purpose deliciousness. Sprinkle this rub over the top. And this has some butter and garlic, pepper, a little bit of sugar to help get the bark really nice. And this is a really dense piece of meat. So make sure you give it a lot of love. Then we're going to come over the top of that Ben's heifer dust. It's a great uh, all-purpose beef rub right here. And you really want to evenly coat this brisket, top to bottom, left to right. We don't really rub the brisket, we just kind of give it a push, a little of that seasoning stick. And we're going to repeat on the flat right here. Sesame oil doesn't give the, uh, the meat any flavor. It will kind of help give a, a nice, robust color to it. And it just kind of acts like glue for the seasoning. So I like to let this sit at room temp for about 20 or 30 minutes before it goes on the pit. Let all of those seasonings kind of start to soak into the meat. Again, we've got the RT1250 fired up to 325 degrees. We're gonna go hot and fast today. So we're gonna go about three hours and then we're gonna wrap this up in peach butcher paper. Let it go maybe another two and a half hours. It should probe tenderness right around 203 or 205 degrees internal. If you were going low and slow on this piece of meat, maybe you're smoking at 225. Let it go for about eight hours or so. The color is gonna look absolutely fantastic. Get it wrapped up, maybe another three hours or so. It's gonna be probe and tender. Again, you're looking for about 203, 205. Your instant meat thermometer or your platinum chip meat probe should go in into the meat. Feel super, super soft. So whether you're going low and slow, hot and fast, you're gonna get maximum flavor out of this Chattel Farms Angus brisket with that Rectech. Before we unwrap this beautiful brisket, let's recap that process. We went 325 degrees for about three and a half hours till it looked absolutely delicious. We wrapped it in this butcher paper. We let it go till it was probe tender. It was about 205 degrees internal. It took about another two and a half hours as well. If you're going low and slow, typically you can go 225 for about eight to nine hours. Wrap it up again, maybe about another three and a half hours or so. But again, probe tender is the key. Let's see how nice and juicy that looks right there. It's got that good brisket jiggle. Now again, you can see that bark kind of softened up a little bit. You can go ahead and blast it back in the smoker if you want, but for me, I like it just like this. And again, remember that chef tip from earlier, we made that slice right here. Now we know where to start slicing. We can go ahead and get those pencil wide. Look at that smoke ring. And if you want to up your brisket game a little bit, check out Shock Chattel Farms. Pick up one of their, their Wagyu briskets. That's what you want right there, people. When your brisket dances, that's the good good. You can twist it up, it doesn't break. And then that pull test, give it a little tug. Boop. But there you have it, brisket 101. If you guys want more amazing recipes and videos like this, make sure you check out rectech.com. See you at the Rectech.